The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty mighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandments to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouths shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 119, verses 73 to 96. Thy hands have made me and fastened me. 
Oh, give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I have put my trust in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right and that thou of very faithfulness has caused me to be troubled. O let thy merciful kindness be my comfort according to thy word unto thy servant. O let thy loving mercies come unto me, that I may live, for thy law is my delight. Let the proud be confounded, for they go wickedly about to destroy me. But I will be occupied in thy precepts. Let such as fear thee turn unto me, even they that know thy testimonies, O oh, let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. My soul longeth for thy salvation, and I have good hope because of thy word. Mine eyes long sore for they, thy word, saying, O oh, when wilt thou comfort me? For I am becoming like a bottle in the smoke, Yet do I not forget thy statutes. How many are the days of thy servant? When thou wilt, when will thou do judgment on them that persecute me? The proud have digged pits for me who are not after thy law. All thy commandments are true. They persecute me falsely. O oh, be thou my help. They had almost made an end of me upon earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. O oh, quicken me after thy loving kindness, and so shall I keep the testimonies of my mouth. O oh, Lord, thy word standeth fast forever in the heavens. Thy truth also remaineth from one generation to another. Thou hast laid the foundation of the earth, and it abideth. They continue this day according to thine ordinances, for all things serve thee. If my delight had not been in thy law, I should have perished in my trouble. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. I am thine, O save me, for I have sought thy precepts. The ungodly laid wait for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. I see that all things come to an end, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. The first reading is written in the third chapter of the second book of Samuel, beginning at the 22nd verse. Just then, the servants of David arrived with Joab from a raid, bringing much spoil with them. But Abner was not with David at Hebron, for David had dismissed him, and he had gone away in peace. When Joab and all the army that was with him came, it was told Joab, Abner, son of Ner, came to the king, and he has dismissed him, and he has gone away in peace. Then Joab went to the king and said, What have you done? Abner came to you, why did you dismiss him? So that he got away. You know that Abner, son of Ner, came to deceive you and to learn your comings and goings and to learn all that you are doing. When Joab came out from David's presence, he sent messengers after Abner and, and they brought him back from the cistern of Sirah. But David did not know about it. When Abner returned to Hebron, 
Joab took him aside in the gateway to speak to him privately, and there he stabbed him in the stomach. So he died for shedding the blood of Asahel, Joab's brother. Afterwards, when David heard of it, he said, I and my kingdom are forever guiltless before the Lord for the blood of Abner, son of Ner. May the guilt fall on the head of Joab and on all his father's house. And may the house of Joab never be without one who has a discharge or who is leprous or who holds a spindle or who falls by the sword or who lacks food. So Joab and his brother Abishai murdered Abner because he had killed their brother Asahel in the battle of Gibeon. Then David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him, tear your clothes and put on sackcloth and mourn over Abner. And King David followed the bier. They buried Abner at Hebron. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. The king lamented for Abner, saying, Should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound, your feet were not fettered. As one before the wicked, you have fallen. And all the people wept over him again. Then all the people came to persuade David to eat something while it was still day. But David swore, saying, So may God do to me and more if I taste bread or anything else before the sun goes down. All the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, just as everything the, kid, the king did pleased all the people. So all the people and all Israel understood that day that the king had no part in the killing of Abner, son of Ner. And the king said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? Today I am powerless, even though anointed king. These men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too violent for me. The Lord pay back the one who does wickedly in accordance with his wickedness. Here endeth the reading.
Gospel is written in the 27th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 45th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemme sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard this, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got out a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a stick to give, give it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earth, earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly this man was son, God's son. The Gospel of the Christ. Praise to, be to thee, O Christ. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. 
Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, grant in our hearts the love of thy name, increase us in true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by these, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Light in our darkness we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, Defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>